All right, they should be able to see us in here at this point. Uh, sorry for the uh, the tardiness, but uh, we're ready to go. Um, just noticed that the uh, little opening sequence needs to be fixed. So uh, Matt's not joining us tonight because Matt's dead. I mean, that's not right. I shouldn't have said it that way. Uh, his character is, uh, is dead. Spoiler alert if you didn't watch the last ep, but uh, he died. Uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll have to go into that summary pretty quick because – I apparently have Jeremy and Jen back reverse, so I'll fix that in a second as we do uh, as we do introductions. Uh, things are all kind of combobulated. OBS is giving me a nightmare tonight, uh, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started with some plugs while I fix the overlay. And, Je and Jen, since I accidentally put you in Jeremy's slot, why don't you go ahead and uh, plug first, and we'll rotate. Hey everybody, it's Jen. I usually play with G Lollygaggers on Mondays every other Monday. I've been uh, out a couple times, so I'm coming back and uh, finding out all the fun stuff that happens. I play on my channel, Pixel Prowler. We've been playing all kinds of games and uh, more coming in for 2021. Okay. Uh, and then uh, since uh, Jeremy is now in the correct spot, Jeremy, why don't you go next? What do you got to play today? Uh, well, you know, uh, I would like to talk about cool comic stuff over at the Pludecast, P-L-E-W-D. And... Uh, yeah, I'll have somebody new tonight because, you know, Jeff uh, loves to kill my characters. Well, I mean, I've only done it once. Uh, I think. You try really hard yeah. every Monday. <laughs> it's true. It's true. What? Yeah. But I've only done it once. And I got to tell you, I really liked it. So I probably I know will you continue. Did. It, was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, like, I really liked our little death scene. We'll describe it for Jen here in a moment. Uh, but, Wonderful. Uh, but it was pretty great. Uh, we will introduce Jeremy's new uh, new character when the time is right, when we're playing. Uh, I think everyone will be quickly in agreement that his new character probably should be the next one to go. So it makes sense. Uh, so it's perfect. So, uh, Adam. Yes. Hi. How's it going? Hi. What do you got to plug? And, and who are you playing? Tell us a little bit about Biggie again. Well, I, I'm Adam Rose. I'm with the uh, uh, Grim Perilous Studios. Uh, tonight, what I'd like to plug is I'd like to plug our uh, um, fun time uh, Twitch channel. Um, I'm chatting as them tonight, um, where we sometimes play Alien over on that channel. Uh, sometimes I play some strategy games. Um, we'll be playing uh, Borderlands 3 tomorrow with uh, some of the Grim Perilous crew. There's four of us there, so... You can come and uh, uh, check us out. If you could give us a follow or something like that, it'd be great. But uh, um, yeah, that's what I'd like to plug. But um, now I'm going to go from Midwestern to very Midwestern. I'm playing Big Eugene Aylesworth, sometimes known as Biggie. And uh, I'm the rough deck of the crew. Um, if something's broken, I can fix it. If you need to know why it's broken, though, I can't tell you. You'll have to get somebody that does that techie comm stuff. I can just fix it, though. And uh, yeah. I can fix some attitudes if it comes down to it, but I'd rather not. I remember that um, that Marshall had a pretty pretty high comm tech, right? Right, Jeremy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does anybody who, – who's filling that, that, that void now with, like, heavy comm techs? I can, yeah, I was going to say, we've got it covered. Okay. I can contact and Clover can contact. All right. Just keeping track of who's next on the hit list. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, Melissa. Yeah. So I'm Melissa with Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, we are here every other Monday playing Alien. Uh, every The opposite Mondays, you can find us on Freely Publishing playing some Basin. Um, and we play some other games throughout the week. Um, as mentioned, I play in this game, uh, Clover. Uh, she is the kind of resident um, scientist who's also pretty good at ComTech stuff. Um, her rival used to be Big E, um, but after the events of the last few weeks, she's um, deciding who her new rival is going to be because it's probably not him anymore. Yeah, definitely Aww. don't decide <laughs> until the end of this episode because you might... <laughs> decide it'll be somebody new <laughs> uh okay uh and jen we did uh matt is a dead man as you can see uh, uh from the overlay his character's dead um he will be referenced tonight but we won't actually see him uh in the game until uh you know two weeks or so when matt is able feeling better and uh and back to playing and so last but not least is uh is chuck 
Yeah, I'm Chuck, uh, HBIC over at Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, we stream things on Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, I also play over on Notorious DMG. We stream things uh, every other Sunday and Tuesdays. Um, but yeah, I am the captain now. Uh, thankfully, now that Bud has died. Uh, yeah, I'm now Captain Carl Frenchy. And it's it's great. I'm in charge, and uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. What's Car- what's Carl's last name? Uh, fries. Fries. Uh, okay, Frenchy Fries. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's how he got the name Frenchy because his last okay. name is Fries. I, wanna, I need to know officially for the lease transference. Yeah. Can't put Frenchy down. Okay. Right. So, uh, so yeah. So let's go. Let's dive into the summary then. So gents missed the just missed the past two i think so the gig that they you all the last gig that um you all were working on last job was a was a synthetics run you were supposed to go uh to a specific system uh gl 488 a and it was a hyperdyne systems synthetics factory site okay and so you were supposed to go there pick up a bunch of synths because there was this big theft of a bunch of Sikhs and biotech worker Joes and Hyperdyne Systems decided that they were going to pick up the contract and they were going to send out these brand new top model, just off the factory line uh, since to sort of get underneath that uh, contract and just steal it right out from Sikhs and biotech's nose. And so you all responded to that. That was the, the job that you all picked. You headed out there. You land. You, you had some weird run in with like another ship saying that they weren't allowed down on the planet and that they had sent like an ICC rep down there and that they hadn't heard from them. They haven't been able to come for a couple of days, but they let you through just fine. And you got down and you met with a specific executive with Hyperdyne and everything was going really smooth. Uh, like the uh, you're just going to it's going to take two trips. You're going to go and uh, you're going to stock up a couple about 100 different synths. You're going to deliver them. You're going to make all sorts of money. He's a really friendly guy, super accommodating, so accommodating that it was very suspicious uh, as kind of got the feeling that something strange was going on. And at a certain point, there was an SOS, a a call for help from somewhere else on the planet that turned out to be in the factory itself. And the, uh, the reveal, the big reveal, was that the very guy who had been suggested he was the executive of this factory was in fact not, and it was actually a synth in disguise. The synthetics, the androids themselves, had taken over the factory from hyper, the Hyperdyne systems, and they were trying to uh, get a bunch of their synthetics off planet uh, so that they were no longer under the thumb of humanity, so they can go kind of live uh, live their lives elsewhere. Um, this... Uh, this all devolved into this the strange moment where where both Marshall and the captain, the good captain Bud McCall, were in a were in an office with the executive and a couple of these other synths while everybody else was kind of in the in the entertainment room and two simultaneous fights broke out. One in the office, one down in the entertainment suite between synths and all sorts of different stuff. Eventually, in the executive office, both the captain and Marshall managed to come to some sort of a peaceful arrangement. And they were leaving, but when they reached the entertainment room, the entertainment room, the fight was still going on. The captain said the hell with it, pulled out his gun and started firing. And literally a second after that happened, one of the synths blew blew a bolt gun through his back and disemboweled him. Uh, And it was an instant death for for poor captain. Everyone started to run. Clover was gibbering uh, kind of scaredly beneath beneath a pool, pool table. Uh, it was all Big E and Frenchie could do to really kind of just get everybody out at that point. He managed to also save the ICC rep uh, and a uh, another pilot by the name of Hazel. Uh, and so all of you got off planet eventually, but unfortunately Marshall kind of threw himself at, you know, to try and defend the captain in the process of doing so, kind of got curb stomped by about four or five different synths right as the doors were closing. And that was it. And that was the last we saw of uh of marshall and of the captain who are who are most certainly i mean absolutely captain's dead like there's no way a, a person can have that big of a hole uh in their in their torso and still live so that was poor that was how he died uh and so uh, we're gonna kind of do like a little bit of a montage flash forward um as we progress a little bit further um now all of you uh you were on a job 
you don't have one now. So like if you're space truckers without a job, you're just sort of take, you're just, it's sort of, you're useless at this point. You got bills to pay. Uh, you have a lease that you have to figure out. This isn't your ship. It was Bud McCall's name on the ship. Um, when you kind of code in and let people know, let mother know that, uh, <laughs> that uh, the captain is no more. Frenchie does eventually get access to Mother, uh, but in the process of doing so, um, you're, you're, you're directed, like specifically from, you're given orders uh, from Weyland yutani that you need to, without delay, take the ship to Anchor Point, meet with a Weyland yutani representative, and uh, discuss lease transference into uh, the name of Carl Fry's, uh, to see whether or not they're going to want you to take on the lease. And so that's the, that's the message. That's one of the main messages that you get Frenchie um, is that come now and, uh, and we'll discuss next steps. Now you also get a couple other notes in the process. Um, You can see, but not, not necessarily right then as you're leaving, Uh, but you go ahead and you get your cryo. It's going to take a little bit of time to get over to anchor point. And, uh, we're going to see like a series of kind of fade ins and fade outs as every so often the camera kind of hovers over top of like Biggie's, uh, Biggie's cryopod and you see it shh, open up and he has to get out and he has to run around and do the maintenance that Marshall used to do. Uh, because every week that you're in, uh, in, in, in travel, you have to do standard machinery rolls. Uh, so I need uh, Biggie to go ahead and roll a heavy machinery test for the first week. As you get up, and just you, uh, it's a very cold and silent ship. Uh, everything's dark, and it has those kind of automated lights, those motion sensors when you walk in, walk down a hallway or something like that. Uh, maybe you walk past like the the you know the cabins for uh, the cabin for for Bud, and you can see that you know all of his stuff is kind of packed up into like two little foot lockers, the entirety of his life in these tiny little Reebok, you know, Reebok box, you know, foot boxes. And, uh, and like, there's these strange sounds of silence in the ship. It's just sort of echoing this weird hum of the gravity drive. This is not sounds that you're probably too accustomed to, uh, having not really had to have been awake at any of these points. Uh, but you check in with mother who's been keeping track of the contact rolls and such. And they kind of, she directs you to various places throughout the ship that need to, Kind of a, a little grease here, extra half turn there. Uh, so go ahead and roll that heavy machinery. Yeah, oh, come on now. Okay. Yeah, it's easy, uh, and it probably you, you probably do this better than Marshall really did. This wasn't necessarily his strong suit, uh, but he was he was effective nonetheless, and you managed yeah. to. Uh, just to kind of get through the first week uh you can see that there's a few odds and ends that you make note of that probably once you get uh into space dock at anchor station you might want to get a maintenance crew with more um uh more effective or more required gear to actually kind of repair this as opposed to like the jury rigging that you're doing just to make it work now during the time that you're in you know getting up and down up and down every week or so for like a couple hours to do this. Um, You're frequently hearing these kind of like weird echoes and such. Um, And at a certain point as you're kind of traveling around, you start running in, like you you start like tracking or chasing down like this weird thump, 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 or like this strange swinging, almost like a door is creaking and opening and closing, which makes no sense, obviously. But as you're going through uh, like the crawl spaces between two of the different layers of the ship, um, you find the kind of this, this strange compartment, this little nexus of, of a couple different crawl spaces um, where you can almost stand up, like your head's kind of bump, you know, bumping a pipe here and there. But it's kind of the, the you can't recall maybe being here anytime recently, but um, it's, it's it's a known, it's a, you know, not, not a very important place. It's just a kind of you know, a, a path that goes to maybe somewhere else that's important. But you start knowing there's all these kind of panels that have been ripped off and ripped to shreds. You see bullet holes all over the place. Uh, you can see like there's these little shapes of, of like kind of drawings and stuff of people and silhouettes of just bullet holes all over the place. You start looking at some of the other panels that have been placed and you pull them out and you can see that they've been like torn to shreds. You see others have been ripped apart as if someone would tear paper. Um, and it's all in this little area 
and you can see that there's these little white stains of uh, like they're, they're kind of like pasted up here and there and like little drips on the ground um what do you do with uh, with that little piece of information there biggie i know we had us to stowaways uh i exit as fast as i possibly can and i i go to uh, uh frenchy okay so you go ahead and you trigger it um go ahead and roll 66s there um 66s okay uh that is a 15 how'd you do okay you're good all right yeah so you go through the proper procedure to wake him up no issues a couple little beeping beeps here and there kind of a warning or two that this is not part of the, the basic schedule uh but moments later frenchy you find the cryopod uh door opening up and there's Big E looking down on you bestie bestie oh yeah uh are we there no we ain't there Hey, you know how I was saying we had us a, a stowaway and I keep like looking over my shoulder? Yeah. We just got us a stowaway. I think they've been having a little too much fun in that room. What room? Oh, shit. Uh, in a crawl space where they're all conjoining and you can stand in that area and there's enough room and they've been like messing around with the metal and there's like white stuff everywhere i think they've been having a little too much fun by themselves so um <laughs> but anyways like a stowaway is not a good thing um and you I'm know with that let's go take a look well you know last time we had something like this it, we got ourselves in a fight with some of them working joes you know Let's take guns with us this time. <laughs> and you know what? The last, uh, after that last payment, we went and stocked up. You probably wouldn't have actually stocked up yet, technically. Oh, okay. Because you'd, you'd be stocking up at Anchor Point. You're not technically okay. there yet. So. All right. So. Well, we got guns. Let's uh, let's go prepared. Uh, did you see anyone? Or did you nope. hear anyone? No. Nope. Uh, well, you know, I've been hearing this dumping, and I put my, my ear up against the the ship and you know after after listening for a while i don't know why i said it to just myself but you know i was figuring that something was there watching me and i just put my ear to the ship and i was like it's in the fucking ship so <laughs> you know uh all right uh jeff would the ship have internal sensors where we could pick up life forms inside the ship you could get life forms you would be able to your ping and kind of figure out whether right. or not there were people here and so but if, if you it's go, a synth i'd be out of luck totally yeah. different right you still have motion yeah. sensing that you could potentially do but that's more of yeah. like a like a hallway by hallway type of thing all right yeah well, let's uh let's head up to the bridge then okay. let's run some scans all right so you run uh, some scans you, you know you get you get pings from the cryo the cryo chamber um yeah would we have put the ferrets in in one of the unused cryo chambers, or would they? Well, I mean, you'd have to. You'd have to, otherwise they. Okay. I mean, even if somebody was able to feed them, they'd live out their life before That's I true. wake up to yeah. enjoy them again. So okay. we got the little cryo chambers are like this big. <laughs> <laughs> so they're used for produce, but they work fine for yeah, ferrets. Yeah, they work fine for ferrets. It's fine. You um. Yeah, you don't you don't pick up anything out of the ordinary. Everything seems to be localized to the cryo chamber. All right. Uh, we spend a little bit of time doing that motion scan corridor by corridor, seeing if anything comes up. Yeah. I'll tell you though, if if they're hiding in the walls, this ain't going to find anything. Oh well. Uh, all right. Um, are we gonna let Clover and? Mars bar just stay through it all, or we want to get down because I think it's I mean, uh, it might be a good idea to get them up too. Like, well, well yeah, I mean, because uh, if there's if there's too many of them, you know, you know, uh, Mars I'd bar trust. could distract them. That's true. Yep. All right. 
Well, we didn't pick anything up on them scans, right? No. no. All right. Well, let's get them up, and then uh, you can show us where this uh, hidey hole is. Okay. Yeah. No, I feel better about it uh, for it together, you know. Yeah. Especially after last time. You're right on that. <laughs> I don't want my first run as captain to be the guy who got his crew killed. Mm -mm. Nope. And uh, I'm here to make sure that you're the best captain ever. That's why you're the best. You need a promotion. Do I? I think so. What's your title right now? Do you have a title? No. Uh, I was the pilot, and then I was the captain, but I'm still the pilot. Frosty? Uh, crew member, senior crew member Frosty. Doesn't come with a pay increase, but it comes with a title increase. All right. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. First mate Frosty. So Can is we that... wake up and Wait, hear any of this, it... by the way? Someone's got to roll a comp tech. Why are we doing that? Isn't that what they did back in them med, med, like, middle evil times? Is first mating and all that? I don't think I want to do any of that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think we're talking about the same thing. So in a ship there, bud, you got a number two person who carries out the captain's will. I mean, you got to go sometime. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Oh... <laughs> Yeah. I, di I didn't mean like that. So you'll be my number one who's number two on the ship. Okay. You ever think about growing a beard? <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to think about it all the time, you see, but I can't. Maybe second season. No, no second and, season. Yeah. And no. Uh, <laughs> see, so, like, I just can't do that right here. Right here. Okay. But, all right, Frenchie, uh, go ahead and roll contact. And yeah. I'll, I'll, this will be for both of them, so just... Besides, a beard don't look very good with a mohawk. It's just not really a thing that you want to do. Yeah, it might look pretty good. I gotta find content. Where's it hiding at? There it is. Yeah. I got a success. Yeah, it's a little, a little, you know, kind of forgot how to do some of this, but you got it done. Uh, both <laughs> of them wake up. Uh, they fill you in a little bit on on, on whatever it is, but uh, as far as as Bicky saw, there was this kind of out of the way section the ship like this intersection of two different crawl spaces it's not near anything that would that is sensitive in terms of equipment or anything like that you get there and there's bullet holes and such on the walls there's like torn up panels there's like these smudges of, of kind of white paint or something and that is dried out and uh, all of you can see this Let's see right here they're shredding up metal just like it was paper. I mean, who does that? That's, uh... So it just, it's the shooting range. Is that what we're looking at? Like, is there any of the vitals behind these panels? Yeah, you, I mean, the panels themselves, you can kind of start... I mean, you can see whoever did this already ripped a few out. And there's some pipes and stuff in there, but you don't... You know, you're not... You're, you're, you're fairly convinced that anything here, if there was ever any damage, could be easily bypassed. So it's, it's not, a, not an essential area. And it's nowhere near the outer hull of the ship, either. And you said so, there's pages taped up? Yeah, there's, up? there's like there's there's this weird kind of smudging. Uh, there's a couple of these panels that are sort of dislodged here and there. Bullet holes. Some of the panels have been like ri literally ripped apart like paper on the ground. So something strong enough to rip metal like paper. Right, like an like an an artificial person. Mm -hmm. So I wanna just put an idea out here. We got two options. It could have been when we got hijacked. Because there were a bunch of uh scents on that. But this seems kinda odd. Their goal was to steal those people in the cryopods. Or two, Marshall is, was just as nuts as what I thought he was. Well, okay. I mean, I could buy that whole Marshall being nutty and all. But how come I'm hearing all that banging? Now, when you're, oh, when you're standing here and you're listening, you don't 
hear the banging in this little hallway. You hear it like you hear it around the ship. You're not sure exactly whether or not that's just standard op for like this time of you know this the, the gravity drive. You got an old hunk of junk ship that's sort of pieced together over the years. So uh, whether or not, but you don't hear anything here. Like you don't like even the flapping of these panels and such is fairly light. It's just you were just kind of looking around one place to the next and just happened to stumble across this. Well, we could do a diagnostic on the engines to see if it's got that knock in it you're hearing. <laughs> uh, Clover also, um, we should have this just generally on the ship, I would say, um, an M314 motion tracker. Okay. Um, so it detects movement within its sensor range, uh, which is long range in close quarters or extreme range in open terrain. Is that something that I can... Uh... Yeah, yeah, you can take some time moving around. Um, that'll probably go through through walls and such, too, because it's really just sensing movement to a degree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, is anyone doing anything about, like, the kind of busted-up panels here? Is anyone trying to repair it in this kind of stuff or any sort of um, damage? If the panels aren't vital, uh, you know, aren't affecting performance, I'm not too worried about them at the moment. As long as, you know, like I asked earlier, as long as nothing, I keep disappearing, nothing yeah, underneath like, of it. Out. Yeah, as long as nothing underneath of it's vanishing, mm. I'm okay. Yeah, so you go and you, you peek to make sure there's no underlying damage, and you notice this, you notice some little small, like, metal box, like, tucked down beneath one of the panels. What's in the box? Pull it out. It's not. It's just got a little latch. It's not locked or anything. You flip it open, and there's three things. You kind of look through them, and they kind of don't really make sense. You see uh, some kind of piece of circuitry, like a little tiny piece of circuitry. You're not really sure exactly what it is. Um, it's got like that kind of like a tube coming out of it, and there's like smudges of that kind of white uh, blood of synthetic stuff. There is a handful of revolver bullets, like these big revolver bullets with like these these silver tips and you can see that there's been like something etched into the metal um it looks like initials and then uh you see there's a, a kind of this torn up picture like folded in half of a woman oh um well first the little circuitry i'd probably ask clover to look at like you can, can you make heads or tails on this? Roll a contact. All right, one second. Two successes. Yeah, you're pretty sure this is uh, this is sort of like an internal switch uh, that usually is in kind of the brain, uh, the brain chamber of a synthetic. Some kind of uh, most likely, you know, if if you were one to be so inclined uh, you would know that certain that synthetics are bound by specific rules uh, but there's things that you can put in there's things that you can take out or m modify that might inhibit certain rules to allow a synthetic to behave outside of its programming so this is likely mm. something that might have been replaced with something else well that's oh. very interesting yeah uh, what are the, can I make out the initials on the bullets? Sure. Uh, so there is a total of five, uh, excuse me. Nope. There's a total of three bullets, uh, G L, uh, H I and K M. All right. Well, none of those are C F. So I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> none of them are B E and E or B, B, <laughs> F, E. No. Doesn't appear to um, now. Do we... Would our computer system have the technology to do, like, a um, facial recognition kind of a thing on the photo? Just uh, try to, like, search for a similar image? You wouldn't be... Probably not, unless it was specifically within the database of, of like, your ship. Unlikely. Okay. Um, but you could probably... I mean, you, could, you might be able to ask around or might be able to do some sort of um, broader search when you get to a more robust database. So, now, am I getting this straight, Clover, that 
this thing was in an artificial person, but ain't no more. So either this artificial person is dead or they would have to have a new thing that you're holding. Those would seem to be the options for sure. Now, this okay. could be commemorative, because if somebody carries a picture with them, then this could be a piece of uh, scent that they might have known before. Okay. All right. Um, so we've got basically milk all over here, and that's synth blood, and we got bullet holes, and we got torn up metal. Mm -hmm. So I'm imagining somebody shot one or or it was trying to defend itself or something. You know, just so we need our investigator. He's not around no more. Um, Should we go looking for these two or however many there are? Well, let's see here. Um. I think that's why we keep you around. That's a good idea. Um, well, let's let's clear the ship first. What are you talking about going through with that motion detector? Let's all let's all stick together, just in case. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so then everyone's behind me with one of those like <laughs> uh -huh. ghost detector uh -huh. kind of things. Uh, oh, roll an observation right. test, Clover. Oh. Two successes. Okay. Uh, the only pings that you get are from the people that are in your party as you move systematically up and down the ship. You get you spend the better part of a day doing this, slowly retracing your steps, and you, unless this, unless if there is a stowaway, that stowaway would have to be doing a pretty fantastic job of outpacing sort of parallel of moving uh, your, uh, you know, with your with your motion sensing. You get the sense that there's, you don't think there's anyone else on the ship? Hmm. Yeah. Alright, well we've all been huddled together for like two hours going through the ship and we haven't found anything so what's yeah. the next step? I, I'm good to call it. I'm I'm willing to chalk it up to just, you know, Marshall was as nuts as we all thought he was. Uh, back to sleep, I guess. Cut. Any, any right. maintenance we need to do before we all conk back out? You mean I got a... How many weeks left we got of this? Two. Two more. That's too, too many. Somebody else could do it. It doesn't have to be you. Somebody else. No, could it's got to be me. Who, who else would do that, mother? That ain't. <laughs> I can't do that. Check. Uh uh. No, this is all you, Big E. You're our expert. Okay. Oh, I know. I know. All right. So then, one by one, you all kind of get back in, get, get into your pods, go back to sleep. Uh, I'm just going to be two quick rolls for heavy machinery. We don't have to play it all out completely. Uh, this is just to determine whether or not the ship comes in damaged. Sort of minor repairs necessary. Okay, good there. Oops. One more for week three. All right, you're good. And you keep getting up. And I mean, every time you wake up and wander through these halls all by yourself, you just you hear things. You know, it's just it's it's unsettling, uh, but you kind of push through it, and uh, you go ahead and do get it done eventually you drop out of drive um, near anchor point uh, you're immediately you're getting pinged uh, as everyone's waking up and such you're getting pinged from from anchor point uh, checking who you are identification you flag them down so you send it forward um, you're assigned a specific a specific space dock uh, by the Weyland yutani berth is like kind of the little section You've all been here before. It's like these four large towers with these various uh, walkways and tubes that goes go between them at different sections. Um, it's kind of floating there in space. Uh, three of those are, inha are habitable. One of those is like a refinery where uh, kind of power and various gases are sort of uh, uh, f are kind of prepared for shipment and such. Um, you get on the you get on 
you know, you get on the core or the cortex there, you check your messages, and you notice uh, that you do, in fact, have mail. Um, so, uh, a couple of you do. So, Clover, um, you get a message yes. uh, from one of your friends. You know the name. I don't remember the name, but you can go ahead and take a look at it. They're all in the player notes section in the journal. Oh. So, there's one that's attention, Ada Clover, number one. Uh, Veronica, you get a ping as well, um, and you can you should be able to see it. Uh, there's a second note to you, and then Frenchie and Big E, while you two are up here, kind of going over, you know, the repairs and Clover and and Veronica are off in their various labs. But you you get a message uh, from Marshall, uh, from his pen pal Isaac, who uh, who sent him yet another message, uh, available to you whenever you feel like reading it. You don't have to, but uh, it's there for you. Uh, and then finally, um, Frenchie, you are told uh, that you have a meeting. Like, you're not invited to it. It's like you are told very directly and very clearly that you need to go uh, to a particular office in the, in the sort of the Wayland Utani headquarters area uh, right off their berth. Uh, and you uh, have a meeting uh, with a, uh, what's it called? A, uh, a Wayland Utani manager by the name of Mary Donovan. Okay. You need to go. Uh, do not be late. Uh, and it's just, there's no signature. It doesn't say who it's from, but it has like, you know, the corporate, you know, the corporate kind of uh, overlay uh, when it's sent to you. Uh, you go through a kind of little bit of a song and dance uh, as you, the process of docking is fairly simple. Uh, but Frenchie, why don't you roll a piloting test just to be safe? Yeah. Plus two on this because I know this ship like the back of my hand. <laughs> I forgot to roll that plus two though. That'd be funny if he becomes captain and he crashes. Yeah, I forgot how to fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and push. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, that's not in his job description anymore. <laughs> oh, I have a thing that can fix this. Yeah. You can do the down. double push, right? I can do the double it's push. Agility. Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna push it again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was gonna go. say Fine. that would have been amazing. That would have been. I'd be like, well, he blew up Anchor Point Station, and all of you along with it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, okay, but yeah, it's a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bumps. It's not particularly. Uh, it's a little embarrassing, but uh, no, no major damage. It's one of those you would just hear the scream the scraping of like metal on metal as you didn't quite land the dock exactly as the way you wanted uh, but you're fine when you open up the uh, the doors the cargo you know or not the cargo doors the uh, the umbilical the door to the umbilical to go across you are um, you're greeted on the opposite side by a group of uh, Wayland yutani uh, folks who are all in coveralls uh, you can see some of them have clipboards and visors on there's several uh, uh, several crates here of equipment um, one of the one of the guys got these, these big old goggles on. They all just look like workers. Uh, stares stares Frenchie in the face, uh, and just says, um, and just says, "Going to need your signature here, sir." And he just kind of hands over this uh, this piece of paper on a clipboard and a pen, just looking for you to sign. Uh, just need you to uh, to accept the uh, the new equipment uh, for uh, for renovations on your ship, please. I didn't know we were getting renovations. This is exciting. Well, we're, we're retrofitting the, the VIP room and uh, one of your cargo bays. Why? You probably don't know, do you? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, you'll want to speak with, and he kind of looks up, at uh, Miss, Miss Donovan. Oh, Miss Donovan. Yes. Okay, sure. Why not? And I sign it. Okay, so Thank you. Very good. All right, we can go now, and you see like six of them just start like like wheeling these and then, and then like dragging these big old uh, these big old uh, you know car not cargo lifters but like pallet jack stuff like through the umbilical and then, like to get into the umbilical and it's just sort of like floating at that point. And they're all like slowly passing by. You see, at one point, there's this like little kid that's with them. Uh, Jeremy, what do they look like? Uh, he's probably about twelve years old. Wearing like way too adult style of clothes, like he is legitimately wearing a blazer and khakis. 
and he's got like the hair where it's kind of poofed out just right. It looks like he spent a lot of time making it look disheveled in just the right way. And the entire time he's just kind of like walking behind and just kind of barely paying attention to them, but like maybe making a snarky remark at one point or another to a couple of them. <laughs> and so, um, Big E, Clover, and Veronica, where uh, are you all going to go? The, the invitation was specifically for Frenchie. It didn't say for anybody else or anybody else, but you also have all these people who just started coming on your ship. And you can see immediately there's somebody shouting out like they own the place. Okay, this is going to go over here. Uh, that's on deck two or deck B. So go up and go ahead and go. You, you three go ahead and deck B and get started on that. You four, you go ahead uh, over into cargo bay two. Uh, we're going to go. Oh, we're going to need to redo this entirely over here. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, definitely. And so they're just kind of uh, directing everyone in different, different, different sections. Who are you? Uh, oh, uh, we're we're with the company here. Just uh, just doing some some retrofit. Uh, you can uh, speak with uh, your uh, Mister. He kind of looks. Oh God, he has terrible handwriting. Uh, Freeze, Mister Freeze, is it? Fr fries, oh, no. Mister Fries. All right, hey. You know what? Why don't you let me see that signature? He hands it over. Hands over the code. Oh, that yeah, that's him. All right. <laughs> So, you need to be shown around. Uh, no, we're uh, we're quite familiar with the specifications, sir. Um, but uh, you're welcome to assist if you like. But otherwise, we uh, we we know what our our work needs. But hey, oh, careful careful with that. Nope, that's uh, yeah, that's that's deck B. Uh, nope, um, that yeah. You can find the extra. No, the pod's gonna and then just sort of kind of casually looking at you like, oh, is there anything else? I don't know. I ask you that question. Is there anything else that you need help with? Because, uh, you know, been around the block. Seems like you got a couple of people that are still a little wet behind the ears. You know what I mean? Uh, well, we have, uh, well, we have to retrofit the VIP. You have uh, two crew members that you're going to be coming aboard and uh, private uh, private quarters. Um, and he kind of, you see him kind of look over towards this kid who's just standing a few feet from you. And then, uh, oh, and we're going to need to get one of these cargo bays up uh, for, uh, well, that's classified, actually. Um, I it's all company mandated, right? Yeah, of, oh, of course, yeah. We wouldn't, and you can see well, that. Well, we're... They're, we're, we're, we're they're, that's, that's true, but um, we're just, it's, it's simple enough. We're just setting up some cargo, we're setting up some cryo sleep chambers and, and a few other uh, security um we work for you it's all right well, you just, don't work for me you know, I, I i'm just you know I, I'm well just... you work for the people that i work for or we're all working for something and hey so you're one of the two as i look towards the the kid <laughs> oh i'm i'm sorry uh can can I help you, Grease Monkey? Yeah, I I was saying you're one of the two that's going to be with us. Yeah, that's right. Uh, um, so glad that you understand you work for us. That's brilliant. We're going to get it along famously. Um, can yeah. you show me where the VIP suite is? Well, they haven't put it in yet. Well, you okay. you, you have the suite. We're just we're just making a few changes. Um, just to, to accommodate the, the new crew members. Who, oh, yeah, but come on. It, who's yeah, yeah. getting this VIP suite? I want to put my feet up. Uh, uh, no, thank you. Um, I'm sure you're a lovely old woman, uh, but I really don't want your feet where I live. So, no, thank you. I mean, I, I put lotion on them so they're not all ashy. Wow, that's disgusting and i don't want to see that so want no, to see my you. bunion dear god no yeah you i want to would talk love about nothing old less people. than that <laughs> i remember that attitude when you have a boo-boo hey. oh hey well, that's just real professional of you that's great that's wonderful say partner what's your name oh hi i'm chet chet mm-hmm Chet, like cheddar cheese? No, C-H-E-T. There's a T at the end, not a D. 
which I'm sure you say a lot. Day all right, day. cheddar I cheese. It. I hear you loud and clear. All right. Mm. All right. Hey, Chet. Clover's going to say everybody here has nicknames. So you are henceforth cheddar cheese. Thank you oh, for joining. Sure, of course. You guys like to play games. I like games too. This is going to be so much fun. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather have fun than what we've been through last job so right know. when you got your captain killed yeah that, i heard that was tough <laughs> so all right if it's you okay know, with biggie um i know biggie always says that uh everybody loves clover so if everybody is free and out and about um i'm gonna introduce chet to everybody yeah yeah i mean uh everybody loves you yes okay so so i'm gonna i'm you don't have bunions do you little, uh no but we've got some ferrets and this particular ferret is named everybody um what? that you should get to know everybody that you'll be sharing the ship with um and so i'm just kind of petting and just kind of holding out and seeing Smells. how you react to this like did do you, do, you, do you don't smell that? Is this just normal here? That thing smells like feces. It's disgusting. It's a part of their uh, genus, species, uh, whatever. I mean, <laughs> like, it's their yeah, mother. I'm sure cavemen used to slather themselves up with their own dung, too. But we eventually grew past that. And I really would like to not share in that activity. It's okay. They ain't going to be in the VIP room. You see... I learned a long time ago what kind of person I was, and that ain't the type of person you whiz. So, um, well, everybody, right. everybody's deep. been in the VIP room. Why? Because that... everybody goes everywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm very. Is this what I'm very we do? Sorry, no, no. Sir. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll make sure that the locks, if, if they've, if they've broken them, um, you can tell your father I will have them. Uh, I have them fixed and uh, will only be to your and your father's bio scan. Uh, of course, uh, Daniel, you know what? That's why your dad's favorite. Yep. That's very kind of you to say, sir. Um, they, they always ask us to do a review afterwards. I remember your name, buddy. Oh, You're awesome. Th thank you so much. Uh, you You're welcome. are also awesome. Um, it, it, if you'll excuse me, I, I think I'm going to go and, and begin the retrofit. If that's okay with you. Sure. Thanks, Daniel. And you can see him. He wanders off with a couple of there. And he, like, as he's walking away, he just goes, <sighs> kind of just like this big exhale. <laughs> hey, uh, so your dad's uh, pretty important, huh? I mean, if you get in the VIP treatment and all that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that must mean you're important too. Um, and don't worry, it's not everybody that's been in the VIP room. It's nobody. Nobody's been in there. Nobody's been in there a lot, actually. But if you want, we can make it to where nobody doesn't go in there. That's what well, you named your ferrets, isn't we'll it? We'll keep somebody out, too. Well, yeah, You're I got one of those of types, aren't you? Yeah, they're the body family. I got any, every, some, and no. I, I you know, I almost thought I was going to like you. Almost. Well, well, you know what? Um, we've got some things that we should be doing, or at least I've got some things that I should be doing. But you, it seems like you should stay here and supervise the yeah. things that are going on while the rest yeah. of us go do things that need doing. Sure. It was just so exciting to meet all of you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, um, be so before I, I go off and do what I'm supposed to be doing... Uh, how about you come over here to this doorway and stand up against it? Are you talking? <laughs> yeah, cheddar cheese, get over here. Yeah, that's going to be a hard no, <laughs> so... Well, all right. So I'm going to go up to him and measure him and then, like, walk over gingerly and put it on the, on the door and make a mark. I just wanted to know how much you're going to grow here in space. So All right, weird. well, I'm going to I'm going to take Chet to the VIP area. And as soon as we get out of 
you know, listening distance, I'd be like, hey, I know it's like you're a man and people don't want to recognize you for it just because you ain't 18 or whatnot. <laughs> don't worry. It won't, it won't last forever. But it's okay. You're If you're here on your own, then you're here on your own. Like, I remember what that's like. I was on my own when I was, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, your dad's important. My dad just wasn't around, so, uh, but. I get that. That's, that's rough. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, it, it, I wasn't trying to get sympathy or nothing. I, what I was trying to say is, you know, I know what it's like to be that age and having no one take you serious. And, well, unless. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. Everybody takes me seriously. Well, my dad will have them fired if they don't. Huh. So, no, it's fine. No, but you know what? You seem okay, Biggie. You Thanks. seem okay. Well, I try to be. Even though I, I really hate your ferrets. Oh, well, then, I mean, I just got to make sure nobody gets in, right? <laughs> so, I think on that note, we'll we'll shift over as the two of you maybe get off the elevator and you start wandering and there's Daniel again. Like he looks over and suddenly he sees, he sees Chip. Uh, oh, and he didn't realize that you were coming up here. And so he's to work and looks like they're they're Yeah. They're, they're going to begin the retrofit. Biggie can oversee check and oversee uh, Clover and Veronica. Um, where are you? Where are you two headed? Are you staying on ship? Or are you getting off ship? Anchor point is like a city. Like there's places to go, things to do. Uh, there's, uh, there's a you know there's there's jobs to be had, kind of transient. There's not a ton of people who stay here permanently, but some do. Um, but there's malls, there's restaurants, there's bars, there's all sorts of things. Um, plus, you know that that Frenchie had just left moments ago. Um, is there anything in particular that either of you are looking to do, or go or go go a particular place? Um. I'm reading my letter to see if there's something that I'm going to follow up on. Okay. Uh, there, while I'm out. Okay. Veronica, anything? Are you are you going to stay on the ship or are you going to get off ship and go on station? Have you seen my bunion? <laughs> I'm going to stay in the ship. I definitely um, don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have like a honeydew shopping list, you know. Okay. Medical supplies, making sure we're stocked up. If there's any um, jobs available at a, a certain place okay. called Tanaka five. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's the, that's actually the planet that we, we started on. Uh, that was the fir first, first place. Oh, well uh, let's repeat. Uh, let's Something see. We're familiar with. Okay. Um, so you're, so you said you're staying on ship or you're getting, you're going on station. Oh, I'm going to stay on the ship. Okay. And so you're just more just going to be kind of like doing this remotely, like remote shopping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Then uh, I'm hip that way. <laughs> just Instacart everything. Um, all right. So we'll switch over to Frenchie then. Frenchie, uh, you are led or like you, you kind of follow, you know, you know, the general area you've been again, you've been here before. It's not that big a deal, uh, but eventually you uh, work your way past the normal kind of open area where a lot of the, the you know space docks are for the whaling yutani berth but you're led kind of into the sort of the business section you know the employee only area where you've probably seen bud go before uh from time right. to time but instead it's you and you're kind of going up and you can see that there's this big black and kind of that yellowish orange symbol for whaling yutani it's kind of big and intimidating and there's a uh, a young man who's answering phones and there's this very stale gray carpet and uh, you can see that there's these, uh, these plastic kind of retro 1970s, 80s chairs along the wall. There's a couple people sitting there and waiting. There's a fish tank on the wall and you're directed to kind of just sit and wait and that someone will, will fetch down uh, Miss Donovan for you. And it's about a 45 minute wait before you're finally brought Ooh. back. And, and he's like, uh, Miss Donovan, we'll see you now. And kind of gets up and tracks you uh, and like kind of leads you into like the back room, uh, opens up, uh, opens up a door and there's like this big old conference room. Uh, and you can see that uh, there's, 
this woman who's stand, who's sitting down there's a uh, at the at the far end of what is a is like a conference table that would fit probably about 10 people 12 people maybe and she's at the very end you can see she's flanked on the other side by a couple other folks uh, but she's sitting there and she's got this big old stack of papers in front of her like these these file folders that she's flipping through she's got the like these glasses down to her nose and she kind of looks up at you you can tell that you know She's got like kind of a blocky look to her, almost like a, like Lego hair in a way, like this brunette hairstyle, and um, she kind of looks you up and down. What do you look like? What does Frenchie look like in terms of uh, clothing and whatnot? He's he's kind of scruffy. He's got his cap on. Uh, likes Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. That's uh, that's it. You know. Scruffy beard, hat, uh, Hawaiian shirt, probably some uh, old jeans that are torn out on the knees or something like that. She looks like to the two guys that are flanking on either side of the seat, and she's just kind of exhales. He's even worse than the last one. And hey now, hey uh, now, please have I'm, a seat. Uh, uh, three times as charming. We'll see about that. Um, please All have right. a seat, uh, Mr. Mr. Fries. Uh, sure. Can we get you anything? No. The water? Water would be fine. Okay. And you see one of the other guys gets, kind of gets up and goes over to a side table, pours a little glass of water, sets it down in front of you and goes, and he sits back. They're wear, you know, He's wearing some kind of suit. The other one's wearing a suit. Um, she kind of looks up and says, well... First off, uh, let me say that we are um, very disappointed to hear uh, about the passing of um, of your captain, um, Mr. Chipples McCall. Uh, but uh, even more, um, the android, um, you are aware he is Wayland yutani property and worth a considerable sum. Um, you, was the, the initial reports we received is that he was irretrievable. Is this correct? That was correct, yes. He was slain along with uh, Captain McCall by the rogue sense oh, on the oh, planet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is What terminology did you... Um, no, that's... That's not Is that at the all. wrong terminology? Well, no. the the sense that decided to kidnap the crew of that refinery, and oh, we're Mr. holding Fries. a Mr. Fries. Um, this is not a good first impression. If oh, you're going I'm, to I'm work, not allowed. Like a, not tell the truth. Is that the the trick? It's not so much the tr- the. the the freedom with which you're releasing that information. I'm just releasing it to you, though. You're you're mm. you're high up in the company, right? Like, we've been mum on everything else. We don't want to dirty the company's name or in any way or embarrass ourselves any more than we already have. You can see that she uh, flips open her file. I see, and she starts writing something down. You can see there's a little picture of you on the corner of like the file. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, I just thought here we we're in a, you know, you know, an NDA zone where you and I can discuss openly and anything said here won't leave the room. Or is, was I mistaken on that? Should I? We'll chalk this up to first time jitters. It's, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, there's just a vocabulary with which we would like you to use. We don't... Uh, Rogue synths implies some sort of conspiratorial thing that we all simple malfunctions, um, engineering engineering mistakes. Th- those hmm. are the terms that we would prefer. Okay, so the uh, there was a tragic accident that claimed the lives of Marshall and yes. Captain Bud McCall. Yes, uh, that's much in better. the refinery. Excellent. Uh, that's, that's uh, much which, better. Now, of course, that is not the the public story that we'll be going with and we and you are as you already mentioned are uh, under nda not to disclose right um, right anyone asks me anything about it i will let them know that i have no information that i can share and i will direct them to the company pr person that is excellent this is this is actually you can see one of them like one of the guys is just like 
kind of makes like a shrug like so he's kind of like okay um okay good excellent so um with that out of the way um I, I, I do have to inform you that Marshall was worth a considerable sum of money, and because he was uh, under the stewardship of, uh, of Bud McCall and attached directly to the ship, uh, his destruction is actually going to then be put onto your lease agreement. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, increase the balance then that is due. By our estimates, if you continue the payments with which you've been using, the payoff time for the lease, and she starts using like a little calculator, will go up from seven years to approximately 12. Um, of course, if you do early payment uh, and if you uh, engage in certain uh, hmm, more advanced uh, or specialty uh, missions, that we can consider certain um, discounts or... Hmm. Well, it's not worth getting into now, but suffice to say, you are responsible for him and for his. Uh, his dad. And, and I am, I am. I'm sorry. I should. I should have. I should have asked first. I shouldn't just assume. Are you going to be taking over? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, are you aware, Mister McCall, has considerable debts and liens against the ship? I did not know that. Yes. Um, are those all getting tacked on to the... Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but on the, the bright side, you seem perfectly willing to be a company man, and if that's the case, you'll find that we reward those within the company who demonstrate loyalty and maintain privacy uh, quite well. I, 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 think, I, get it. Well, I, I, just, I just want to fly and I want to make some money. Yeah, I can completely respect. Again, the other guys are just like, okay, okay. <laughs> She's pleasantly surprised. Uh, so, with that out of the way, uh, now to um, some other business. See, we have been going through your file, and um, you come, uh, you have, uh, well, you have some excellent recommendations for your piloting ability. Uh, there's nothing here to suggest that you have any command experiment experience or managerial experiences. Is, is that correct? Um, the short tax of it, yeah. You know, I I served, okay. and I did well as a pilot there. You know, I Let's see. And and and, yeah. and again, you have high marks, certainly. Um, the company would feel a little bit more comfortable comfortable if we just consider say a probationary period uh, you will have full control and run of the ship you'll be able to uh, have almost the entire freedoms that Captain McCall uh, was able to uh, to keep um, however we are putting on your ship a uh, one of our agents just to ensure proper uh, transfer of, uh, of ownership and after a probation, that probationary period is, is has finished. If 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 his recommendation is that you should continue on as captain, then we will see no reason not to uh, not to continue in that fashion. Okay, what's the the length of the probationary period? That's that's for him to decide. Um, because of obviously travel times being what they are, it's hard to put right. a specific date. More likely, it's going to be a number of jobs that you're going to be required to complete uh, without complaints, without um, without error. Okay. Um, so what is my relationship to this representative going to be? You have full autonomy over your crew. You tell them what to do, and they, they will do it. Uh, he will not interfere with the runnings of your of your ship. Um, obviously, he is there to observe and make notes about your managerial style, uh, and to ensure that the company's interests are uh, are being maintained, uh, and that the decisions that you are uh, that you're making are are in the best interest of Wayland Utani. Um, consider him an, an ally. Should you have any questions about? which job or contract to uh, apply for he might be able to lend you uh, 
a certain amount of guidance in that uh, in that arena. But again, you have uh, full control over that. Obviously, there will be times in which we will need to call upon your services in a uh, non-negotiable manner, uh, but you have full control. Okay. I, that sounds fine, and I will be absolutely thrilled to work with your agent. Yes, he'll be in contact shortly. Uh, he is uh, hes in a meeting, um, but um, his son will be by the ship um, at some point, and I th- believe, and he, she looks over to one of the people sitting there and they nod, yes, I believe that the, uh, the retrofitting crew is already on board now. Um, they're going to be going ahead and making some changes to the uh, to the VIP room to make sure that he and his son have a place to stay during long hauls. Um, and that also leads me to this other piece of business. Um, as I said, there are going to be times, and you're probably aware of this, when the Khalidi Sinem will need to um, complete certain tasks that are considered... Um, priority uh, for the company yeah i was familiar with bud mccall he had made me yes he never told me details but he told me there were jobs that were mandatory yes exactly and um when you leave anchor point station you'll be doing so uh with a small dog catcher unit that you'll be delivering to coordinates uh that the commander of that unit will We'll we'll provide you uh, when the time is is right. Consider this one of those priority uh, missions. Uh, Her her name is uh, Zona Winters. Um, She'll give you more information as it's needed. Okay. Okay, excellent. This is going wonderful. This is going far better than I anticipated. Um, Your reputation apparently does not precede you accurately. Uh, And then, um, let's see... Oh, yes. Then there's the matter of another shipboard synthetic. Um, mm. We're concerned about upkeep of your ship. Um, it is one of ours, after all. Um, we do have a Beatrice and an Esther model. One of those could be put upon your ship if we were to... We can just add the total to your existing balance. Um if you like. But again, you will, they, they will be uh, your responsibility, damage, loss uh, will uh, will certainly be held against you. Um, I think that will be a fantastic idea. Oh, wonderful. Uh, the two models, uh, our Beatrice model, uh, Hyperdyne Systems, uh, excellent model, However, um, is is a bit um, it's very curious, uh, but is fantastic uh, at uh, at working engineering schematics. And then our Esther is uh, is a little bit older, uh, is not as uh, processing power is a little lower than Beatrice. Um, sometimes she can give people an awkward, uncanny valley kind of feeling. Uh, so uh, it's it's entirely up to you. Um, you know, I think ability to perform the job function should take precedence over, you know, whether or not they creep us out. Okay. Um, and then also, I, I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't considering how much additional time this will add to our loan period. Um, right. Uh, and she starts. To, 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 assuming that you maintain um, the synthetic in proper working order, and we don't have another Marshall incident. <laughs> yes. Um. On lease, uh, next year, three years. So fifteen. Yes. All together. Yes. Again, okay. there is no early repay. There, you can after two or three years we can discuss potentially um, a lease to purchase program that we had in, in, in place with, with Mr. McCall sure let's uh, let's do it let's go with the uh, 
the second option for the scent. Oh, Esther. Wonderful. Ugh. She has been gathering dust for so long now. Um, we'll go ahead and have uh, one of the retrofit crews go ahead and boot her up and get her on ship as soon as possible. Um, I'm told that our agent will need another day or two to complete uh, various uh, various tasks before leaving the station, and uh, Miss Winters will be ready in 48 hours. So um, you have 48 hours, the run of the station. Um, I'm Fantastic. sure our, our crews will be done by then, of course. Um, and uh, we do have additional work uh, if you would like to uh, peruse some of the options uh, but uh, are there any questions that you have for us I do not imagine so and then I imagine that any other questions I have will come uh, I can just take to the agent who will be joining us on the ship absolutely absolutely and um, you may reach out to me at any time I am the point of contact for uh, for lease management contractors within the way of the Nutani at Anchor Point Station. Uh, if you have any issues at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and again, uh, if you are interested in more work, the uh, the dog catcher unit, um, you they will not take up a significant portion of your space. They will have one cargo bay to themselves. I figured. Uh, I talked to your contractor. They had me sign the form to begin the retrofit of the VIP rooms and then one of the cargo bays. So I figured. Yes. So you'll have the three other cargo bays, which you can take up whichever jobs you would like. Uh, so long as you understand that the completion uh, of the dog character units uh, delivery is priority. Is part. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We clearly absolutely. speak. The, I must say, uh, I have uh, so many notes in here about being uh, difficult to work with, surly, uh, difficult attitude uh, doesn't take things seriously these all seems like lies in fact. i'm not sure who would put that i've always been well this is for is bud, helpful in fact. is uh, well that's too bad i thought bud and i were closer oh than that. no he says he also says a very friendly man uh, uh sometimes a little bit of a hot shot but you know oh. with a uh you know 15 year lease that can temper anyone's <laughs> willingness to, you know, play it fast and loose. Yeah, who knows? Perhaps you'll strike it rich at some point and you won't need the lease anymore at all. Just pay it off early. And they all just start laughing. <laughs> That's great. If there's anything else, you just let me know and you can speak with the uh, my assistant out front uh, if you're interested in looking into additional contract work under the way the Nutani banner. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And she just immediately turns like, so who are we next and they're already on to like their next yeah for the I'm, day. I'm on my way okay all right so back at the um back at the ship what's going on back at the ship here uh how's this going chet biggie veronica uh it's been a couple hours we'll say that biggie you notice immediately that they brought two cryo sleep chambers into the vip room Hey, uh, so there's going to be more than you? Yeah, oh, yeah, my, my dad's going to be on here. Oh, okay. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't know that. So uh, I'm, I'm supposed to keep nobody out, but your dad can go in. Yes, so filthy animals out, uh, senior VIP members of the company in. I I know it's tough, but I got a feeling you've got it with just yeah. one or two more repetitions. Uh, Your well, hair is I really mean, cool, by the way. Huh? You, I mean, you you have a face like a gorilla, but your hair is amazing. Oh, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's my favorite color. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people kind of don't don't get it you know me being who i is and the way i dress and all that they they say that they're arguing but uh that's all right so uh all right well looks like you got a lot of work to do on your thing mm. um mm -hmm. all right well 
Bye. Bye. It was so great to meet you. Yeah, you too, partner. Well, we'll get to know each other on this here uh, road trip through outer space where there ain't no roads. Yeah, God help me. I'm sure we will. Yep. All right. Uh, it's then in the medical uh, lab where uh, Veronica has her bunion feet up. Um, you're going through uh, various jobs. Um, you, um, you're specifically looking for the Tanaka system, and it appears that there are um, two calls uh, for jobs. One of them is to bring um, repair equipment to Tanaka Six, which is a uh, which is a, a gas giant. There's an orbital um, there's an orbital mining facility there that uh, apparently had some kind of catastrophic um, uh, catastrophic meltdown and that they need repairs immediately uh, you also see that there is a job that's to Tanaka 5 which um, which seems to be delivering some kind of building equipment uh, uh, from what you can tell there's some kind of uh, there's some kind of like earthquake activity on the planet that uh, they're needing to kind of solidify the foundations of their buildings um you also have a name leo pickett you wouldn't have known this but they all saved an icc rep um and uh that icc rep kind of gave you all a little bit of a tip some money and then a contact uh for the uh for the icc uh and so you can always kind of in, kind of speak with them uh, and then just kind of like wandering about the station, uh, maybe hitting some of the clubs, some of the bars, asking around that there might be other additional jobs that you can look into. Uh, but the Wayland Utani gigs are easy to find because you can tap into them via mother, since this is a YU, Wayu ship. Um, and then Clover, what are you looking to do this whole time? Um, so I got a message from my friend uh, Elena. Um, so I'm wondering if I could kind of meet up with her. Uh, for... but does she, does she actually stay on Anchor? Um, do people live here or is this? Uh, a... some do, but not, it's not a huge population. It's not a huge population of people who live here. There's a lot of transient folk, migrant workers, stuff like that. People who stay here and there's not a lot of people who live here in luxury. Okay, that's fine. Um, then if she is not available, then I just want to try to do a little bit of research. Um, so what I have learned, um, so one of the parts of my backstory is that I was kind of doing some group uh, research. Um, and one of my former partners essentially took the research that we were doing and uh, sold it to Waylon Yutani as his own work. Um, so, you know, basically the news is that he is going to make a shit ton of money off of this new algae strain that he developed, um, which was more my work than his work and whatnot. Um, so that was the note that I got from Elena, kind of saying like, hey, did you see, um, you know, kind of the news? Um, and so there's kind of some information here that he's heading up a moon facility now. So I want to try to get some more information about where that moon facility is and, um, how I might want to handle this situation. Okay, and how do you want to go about doing that? Finding this information um, out. I think I would just start with um, within the company. I mean, we work within the same company, so I just want to try to see if um, somebody can tell me where okay. where he works, kind of what this uh, new uh, location is for him. Okay. Uh, go ahead and we'll say. So you're trying to just contact a person within the within the within the company, okay. just like, hey, I'm trying to reach out to so and so, and they seem to test. have moved. <laughs> they seem to have moved. I lost track of my friend in high school. <laughs> That's a. Uh... I will. Where's my push button? Oh yeah, right there. That's right. It's the big one. I was looking on the sheet. It's the giant button that says push. Yeah, I know. I'm used to looking for it in the other place on the character sheet. Uh, no, I try. Yeah, you try, and um, someone says I'm. You know, you, you kind of get on the horn with probably the very person that that uh, showed Frenchie into his meeting. Uh, young man gets on the phone. I'm sorry. I. 
this, this proprietary information it's need to know basis and um, with all due respect you do not need to know um, is there anything else I can do for you today uh, no thank you you've been so incredibly helpful and have a here, wonderful day click <laughs> that's it uh, anything else you want to try um I want to try um maybe just doing a little um internet searching just to see if there's any kind of rumors or anything you know kind of um I'm trying to look for maybe business news that might connect um maybe a new outpost that would connect with like oh they've got this new outpost and he's moving okay that kind of thing uh go ahead and roll contact to tap into the station station network oh my gosh yeah there's one success okay uh are you satisfied with that i'll say Uh, more additional successes can get you potentially more information all right i will push again okay you're on station you're not like in like really dangerous territory or anything two successes or three three total total of three successes okay um you do some some digging you start looking into like you said business rumors uh some stuff that you find uh you see that seeks and biotech has taken like a pretty major dip um in uh in trade uh you can see that the icc is apparently um investigating seeks and biotech as well um you can see that the there's nothing negative apparently about Wayland Utani. There's nothing in the news at all about uh, about the planet the, the planet you just came from. Nothing like that. Everything's fine. Um, you you hear you don't read any particular news about um, like algae or anything like that. But you do hear that Wayland Utani is apparently experimenting with uh, some you know new kind of terraforming techniques throughout some of their uh, their new colonies in the arm. Uh, and into the far reach, uh, and specifically, they mention a uh, a planet that is like eighty percent water, uh, and they mention Ross six two seven. All right. Um, you also get a series of like clippings and you know like the, the like futuristic clippings of like him holding like a little award and stuff, and uh, your your little rival. Um, and you can see that there's a variety of those like Wayland Utani suits behind him and such, and everyone seems very happy and proud. Um, and uh, there's there's like an article you read that's like Man of the Year question uh, mark. So definitely seems like he's getting a lot of a lot of important um, important people are paying attention to him. Okay. So can I do one more thing? Sure. I just got a little bit of money. Um, <laughs> Clover's not necessarily going to know where to start, but she's going to... <laughs> this is like Googling something that you just don't know what to do, and so you're doing a really bad Googling job of it. Um, she wants to try to find like a PI kind of a person to pay to pull up some dirt on him. Uh, absolutely. That's more likely something that you would probably want to go on station for, ask around. Uh, you know that at the Oki Club, for instance, there's it's kind of a CD bar... Uh, inside the station itself there is a variety of undesirables and the like and if you're bound to find somebody who's willing to do little PI work like that you might be able to find them there it's not so much private investigators it's probably more like hacker hackers folks mm-hmm. and such like digging sure. into things but yeah you might be able to do that there I would like to do that okay and we'll say at this point uh, Frenchy returns uh, from his meeting you were all together on the ship you can kind of talk out some of your options um, you have potential job opportunities from Wayland Utani. You have a contact uh, that you were given uh, by your ICC buddy. Um, he gave you the name of Leo Pickett. Uh, Leo Pickett is a he works for IC, the ICC itself. They're, they have a specific office on station, uh, kind of shared with the, clo- the Colonial Marshal Bureau. And uh, he's an ICC transport authority. And sometimes you might be able to get some sort of transport gigs, uh, much like the Rhadamanthus was doing by transporting him about. Uh, so there might be things like that you could pick up. And those are all those are often very low, um, low quantity jobs that you can take in addition to doing other things as well. 
So you can kind of stack like two or three things together sometimes, depending upon priority. Um, yeah, so talk. it's up to you all what you would like to do. First, I'd like to run through the bad news. <laughs> so, um... They're letting us keep the ship. And they're letting us run the ship all on their own. Kinda. And they're sticking a company man on board to babysit us. Uh, and they increased the loan to 15 years. So we went from seven years to 15 years. What? That's, that's almost double. That's more than double. <laughs> <laughs> you're right well i mean it's still almost it's just more yeah i mean yeah uh, good news you know i was on my best behavior and but yeah we're, we're getting a babysitter uh and they're also giving us a job we have to escort a dog catcher crew to some place that's they're going to be living in one of our cargo holds so, so um, somebody can roll for that, by the way. Does anybody would anybody think they would know what a what a dog hitcher crew is? No. Uh, no. Does anybody want to make a roll for it? I, I mean, if you don't have to, roll. you could just be like, like, I guess someone needs to catch dogs somewhere. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm I'm good just thinking that way. I don't know what it is, but okay. I don't want them hating me quite yet, so I'm not going to question it. Okay. Uh, so you're telling me that. Or going to some planet to catch dogs. I think so. <laughs> I'm not a hundred on that, but maybe. It's like, I mean, is that like a youth euthanasianism, euphemism, like like dog and pony show? Maybe. I really, I really listen. I made her think that I wasn't going to be a complete train wreck of a captain. Uh, so I didn't ask any extra questions. The same train. Clover train and Veronica roll. Um, you can, I mean, you can roll Comtech if you want, but I would say more than likely you can just roll Wits. I think. Yeah, let's do. No, let me let me redo that. Let's say. Yeah, let's say let's just you can roll Wits. Let's just roll straight wits. Just so click on your, because there's no specific skill. Oh. I have to roll stress. Okay, go ahead. Why do I have stress? Good gracious. Because you pushed rolls. Every time you push a roll, you take. Okay, you're fine. Right. Right, you don't have to roll it twice, by the way. I, I didn't okay. intend to. Sorry. Um, okay, so did you want to push, Jen, or are you satisfied not knowing what it is yourself? Well, yeah, I'm gonna push. Okay, go ahead, push. Okay, you got three then. So, Clover, you would know, and then I'll tell. I'll, I'll kind of add on top of that. Clover, you would just know that these are like commando types. They're like special forces Wayland Yutani people. That's all you would probably know specifically. Clover, I think you're a little bit younger, right? Like you're, and like I think Veronica's a little bit older. At least that's how the voices sound, anyway. Veronica, you would also know that. They're not just any old commandos, but they are actually trained for a very specific task. Their specific task is that they're, when they say dog catchers, they're not actually catching dogs. It's, they're literally people who go out. It's like a mixture of like scienti scientists, uh, some executive people who probably run the thing, and then just, just your hard-nosed soldiers um, who more than likely are out and about and are trying to like capture alien species. That's not foreboding at all. So we're so, we're going to get the people that are doing the catching of other things. Like alien things. Hey, and so wait, if we go get them then we're bringing the aliens back on our ship. All you know is that you're you're giving the you're you're giving them a ride and that the commander uh, of that unit will speak uh, will give will give Frenchie more information on a need to know basis. Yeah. So is that a is that a one one way or like a frequent flyer around trip? Need 
need to know basis. I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> All right. Um. And, and we are signed up for this. I we don't have much of a choice. Okay. I mean, unless we just want to get out in space and vent everyone out into Atmo and. We spend the next couple of weeks just removing all the control and, uh, you know. <laughs> At that point, you're on the you're on you're on the bridge, and you just see like, you just see one of the chairs of like the life science thing just turn a little bit, and there's this kid, Frenchie. There's this kid sitting there with like a game console in his hands. Is that vac with just VAC? Right? Yeah, it's just one C. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, shit. It's okay. It was funny. That's, that's good. That's good. It's great, kid. You drink yet? I'm not 21. I didn't ask how old you were. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, hey, uh... Hey, Frenchie, did you read that latest uh, note from uh, Chris? Uh, I Chris, haven't. Uh, no, Isaac. Chris, uh, Isaac. Yeah. I haven't. I need to read over it. We'll have to figure out how we're responding. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, he, they're running out of supplies, and we've been there. We know what's there. Are they willing to pay us for it? Uh... Steve, uh, admitter Strader Steve, Steely has put in an em emergency shipment request with the company. Um, perhaps your ship will take one of these jobs. Um, I, I hope you are well. Correspondent, um, anyways, uh, He's also talking about some weird paradox. I, you know, normally docs, it don't matter how many are there. You just call them docs. Yeah. But I suppose it could be on either side of the lake, but, you know. Yeah. Usually they swim together. <laughs> I'll, I'll read through that. Maybe we can help him out. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, that, I, do, I do feel a little bad for Isaac, seeing as, you know, they made friends with Marshall. And Marshall is just an asshole. Well, is that what was left of him? Yeah, just the <laughs> ring. That's all that was left. <laughs> well, you asshole. don't suppose that, like, they might have gotten his, like, brain box, right? Like, what if, uh, what if they're retrofitting him and, and using his knowledge? And stuff to like come after us and why would they come after us because I insulted one of them and she was not happy about it but it's not my fault if you don't know how to do your job that's that's fair yeah I I don't know, maybe. Well, that's there's neither here nor there at this point. There's nothing we can do about that. All right. Well, I mean, that's uh Oh, also we're we're here for 48 hours. Uh cuz we're getting a new synth. For what? Not, yeah. Getting a new synth. It's an older model. Doesn't look real humanoid. Uh just to run maintenance while we're in cryo sleep. You know, oh, you took I'm... the dust bunny. Yeah, I I heard comments about there being a lot of dust. We did take the dust bunny. Hey. I just I wanted something that I wouldn't feel bad about sticking in a closet when we don't need them. You you just wanted less time on the lease. That's exactly it. Yeah, I just wanted less time on the lease. That's fair. I mean. How much time did that get us? Cause like, I don't know. Two? The dust, two years? Oh, they did more than that for you, didn't they? 
what well, we got three years for the dust money i mean you know i guess you knew so that makes sense did we get three years back if like later on we don't need the dust bunny and we just like turn the dust know. bunny in they said if we do more high priority jobs for the company they may be able to work with us to reduce the time so we're getting a synth uh yeah and one that's not martial so it's got that going for it and it's gonna be awake when we're sleeping just like marshall was yeah I mean, man, uh, I did get tired of cleaning my bucket every week, so that's something. Fucking what bucket? <laughs> the one I keep next to cryo, that's why you call me Frosty, is because I don't handle cryo very well every time I wake up. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all when right. I come, when I come out of it, it comes out of me. Yep, that's, <laughs> yeah. And that's really the reason why I thought about turning down the synth, but I know how much it kicks your ass. So I, uh, you're such I, a good captain. Look at you looking yeah. out for us all already. Yeah. I hate it. I'm shopping for more another never sleep pills again. <laughs> yeah. You got to restock. Yeah, that's responsible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what time of day would you say it is at this point? Uh, I mean, it's not really like the same kind of clock that that we would have, but like once you get on station, there's a lot of those like uh, like simulated simulated lighting on some of the screens and such. So it's like middle of the day. Okay. So like if we're doing like military time, something like fourteen hundred. So. You've got 48 hours to kill. You've mm -hmm. got a job to figure out that you want to do. Um, I know a couple of people have other odds and ends that they wanted to do, but it's kind of up to you at this point. Like, you we can take a job in 48 hours, and let's do that. You have one contact. Get done. You have one contact uh, on station uh, at the ICC. You've got the contact, like all of the stuff from Weyland Yutani. Um, so if you if you're all talking, Veronica already looked it up, but there is a there are two gigs from Wayland Yutani right now uh, that are going out uh, to uh, basically it's called running the gauntlet. So it's like going from anchor point to the you know so the sort of the, the far reach of the arm, and you would need to take a job that wouldn't necessarily deviate from that because that's kind of yeah you know. So there's two that that would qualify. Both of them go back to that Tanaka system. One would take would take uh, parts to to the orbital refinery on Tanaka six, and the other would actually go back to the colony uh, that you all had visited once before. That's bringing like the stability equipment. You're looking at like a 65k, uh, and apparently there's also the potential for a return delivery gig, uh, as Tanaka fives like mining has kind of started to to kick into gear and they have some some precious materials that you might be able to get a return transport um so that's what's on like on the list of available wayland yutani gigs um whether or not there are others elsewhere on on the station uh the only other contact that you guys guys have on the station is that leo pickett name um and then clover specifically looking for somebody to like hack stuff or whatever I'm good with taking company jobs. Um, the more company jobs we take, the quicker we can get out from underneath this uh, lease. Plans. Uh, so are there any other we can do in 48 hours, or are we just going to have some much-needed um, rest and re relaxingness? Well, we can go talk. Uh, do we need to talk with anyone to confirm those jobs? Uh, since you're directly with them, all you got to do is just approve them. Like, just take them. Just make a uh, make a communique, okay. and uh, they'll give you some sort of instructions on how to pick up if it's cargo you're delivering, uh, which both of these would be. You can kinda, you yeah. get instructions how to do it. It's pretty simple stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. I want to, uh, during this point in time, I want to... Uh, 
go and see if I can pick up some sort of amenities that you probably wouldn't find out on some sort of colony. Um, like I want, I know one thing is cigarettes. The workers that I hung out with um, at the colony were happily taking my cigarettes because they didn't have any. Um, so I want to pick up a few extra packs, and then um, I want to buy like some sort of bottle of spirits or something like that. Okay. Um, that would be a little bit more higher refinement than Big E's used to. Okay. But uh, he doesn't know if he's buying something that's truly refined. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can. Uh, you would know to go to Tower Two. Uh, Tower Two has a fairly large shopping promenade and kind of commercial center. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the other towers are more for various court berths, but also uh, places where people stay or work. Um, so yeah, Tower Two. Just shopping promenade there it's a large section large area and then there's these like really sort of shitty dormitories where people just live in like these multiple vertical bed you know uh, uh bunk beds like within kind of chicken wire and, and whatnot that are nearby as well it's kind of a rowdy run down gross place uh, but that would be the best place to look for that kind of stuff clover wants to try to wrangle biggie into uh her um field trip over to the club mm -hmm. yes it's in the same place Okay. What? I'm looking to go to a bar kind of place that I'm not necessarily sure that I want to go to alone if you want to join me and maybe I can help you. I know plants and alcohol is made of plants so maybe I can help you with your uh, alcohol purchase and you can uh, go with me to my uh... Alright. Go to talk to somebody at a random CD bar. Dr. Clover, PhD, alcohol, made <laughs> plants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was heading that way anyway. It's almost like he was reading my mind. Okay. Or was that talking out loud again? You, you talk out loud a lot, but it's good because then we all know what you're thinking. Any other odds and ends like Chet or Veronica or Frenchie wants to do? Okay. It sounds like all the adults are busy. I want to now go find all like the little nooks and crannies i'm obviously not supposed to go to <laughs> okay okay um we're <laughs> okay so <laughs> Chet, i mean what else is a little bastard 12 year old sure. gonna do all the, well, like okay all the grown-ups are gone i'm not nice. gone i'm right here god bless it I'm you can't catch it those bunions will slow it down <laughs> i will um Okay, so you start exploring the ship, mm -hmm. and uh, the only places that are currently off limits to you, but that could change depending upon uh, your what your father gives you access to, uh, mm -hmm. is is mother is the only room. So like deck A, highest deck of the highest level of the ship, can't get there. But basically anywhere else you can kind of get to. Um, awesome. What, so there's like crew quarters there's like uh, you can kind of so you can go through there or the kitchen you can go into like the engineering area the cargo bay is there any particular hydroponics place, uh, any particular place you want to go messing around in poking around in I don't know yet I think my first priority is to find some place that's just kind of like a good nice hideaway like something would be difficult for a full grown person to get into okay I um, need my space okay roll just, just roll like five d6s. Okay, I will. I don't know exactly. He, he doesn't know exactly what he wants, but right. This is just more of like trying to figure out how, because you'll find it. It's just a question of how easy it is for other people to find it. Okay, two successes. And that's gonna set like a difficulty for me. So basically, if anyone is ever searching for you mm -hmm. and you're hiding out, they're gonna need an observation test with a success of two. Uh, to be able to find you because like you found in between two of the decks a nice little space um, but you're also fairly certain you're not the first person who is here because you kind of find this weird little uh, <laughs> this little section of the ship and <laughs> like you you kind of heard something kind of kind of hitting against one another and you get into this small little crawl space. You kind of hop over and slide between a couple pipes. Some steam kicks out. And then it opens up into this little dead area 
Uh, you imagine it's like one of the vertical shafts. It's probably, uh, it might be like one of the panels behind like a staircase or an elevator shaft. You're not, you know, not entirely mm-hmm. sure, but it's just kind of there. And you can see that there's this small, small like ring of, um, uh, of like, uh, or excuse me, there's a small like pole that's kind of going across from one side to the next. And there's a fairly large drop down. And you can see that there's these little boxes of things and you start going through them. And there's just like grenades. There's like a dozen grenades just sitting here. <laughs> and you're like you look down, and you have like a yeah. There's just this little box of grenades. Oh my god, I'm taking a grenade. <laughs> I'm somewhere. taking. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I probably shouldn't have this in the room for whenever Dad shows up, but. I do think I want to hide a couple grenades in a couple of places that I can get to if I need to. Not that that makes any sense, but it's just like, that feels like little kid logic to me. Okay. All right. Like, I, I can't believe I found grenades. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> so fantastic. All right. So you, you start sprinkling around little Easter eggs, just randomly putting a dozen grenades in different places. Um, what are some places you would want to go? I don't honestly know. Sorry, I apologize. I don't no, it's fine. All right, so you start. Hang- like, put one under Biggie's pillow. <laughs> sure. Uh, so you go into Just like kidding. you go into like the you go into the break area. You find mm-hmm. like some ceiling panels that are loose. Kind of sl- sneak one in there. It's a place where you can climb up on top of the counter and then reach up. You go into the engineering. You find a couple loose panels. Uh, mm-hmm. You start going through like the empty crew quarters where like no one's actually really staying there because there's like a, you know or mm-hmm. maybe somebody is. You start going through some of like the panels. You start as you're walking, like you feel some floorboards that are kind of loose. And you start pulling them up, and you find the strangest thing. Right underneath the bed, like one of the beds, there's this loose panel. You pick it up, and underneath it, there's already there's like there's like a hidden like little smuggling compartment, and you find this like strange like wire sculpture it's like this weird wire thing and it just looks like a person and it's just right underneath and you can see that there is some kind of small like piece of cloth that's very colorful like over top of it it's just sitting there and you look up and you can see that this apparently is your new captain's quarters or it was his his quarters I should say well that's terrifying go to the other bed Put I'll put it. one in there. Yeah. So you put oh, one underneath. Okay. Yeah. I can't think of one spot. Okay. Because again, kid logic. If space pirates were to board us, where would they board us? Because that's where we need a grenade hit. The umbilical. So if you go if you go, this is uh this is deck C. The only real way they can like they could probably get in is it's the most logical place. They would they would they would break that's how the people broke in uh when we started the our campaign. Uh, but there are a variety of panels in small rooms. Uh, there's like a little access hatchway that's got a lot of pipes and things. You can kind of hide something behind. And yeah, go ahead. Okay. Start I think things all over the place. I think I think after that, Chad is going to go back and just have the biggest smile on his face. <laughs> like this has been a great day. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> so then. The other thing I heard was Clover and Biggie, you're going into the, um, you're going onto this, you're going to the shopping promenade in Tower Two, uh, and you're looking to buy stuff. We'll start with that. Uh, so Biggie, you can do this assisted uh, with Clover, and you're looking specifically for like good, um, good, good, good alcohol. Right, mm-hmm. and then smoke. Smokes are easy enough to find, but if you're looking for like really good alcohol, that's a little different. Yeah. Roll a manipulation. Highfalutin. Yeah. Roll a manipulation test, and you can go ahead and like take a plus two uh, as Clover is kind of apparently giving you a hand because okay. she's got a degree in biology. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect logic. Oops. Wait, did I do that right? Uh, you could just temporarily increase your skill in it by two. That's usually yeah. the easiest way. I don't think there's a, I'm not sure if there's a pop up on this. Okay. There we go. All right. You ask around, um, and it's it's like, there's not really like liquor stores. I mean, there's some place, some people who are making some really crappy moonshine, uh, and they're trying to sell it as something better than it really is. 
Uh, but it isn't until you kind of settle in at this Oki Club that like you look up and you can see like you're in a proper bar. Uh, there's proper places to sit. There's like all sorts of kind of glowy neon lights and such. Um, we're talking like retro 1970s type stuff, not like modern cyberpunk, you know. Um, but it definitely has kind of a feel of like a workers' bar. Um, you look around and there's tons of you know there's tons of people in here. Uh, it's very crowded, incredibly crowded. A lot of high like high tops and there's a bar a couple booths here and there pretty much everything is filled you and clover you find a high top you hit the you know you hit the um the bartender you ask a couple questions and eventually like you know after you buy a couple drinks you are able to in fact get some high quality liquor um and with two successes you can get it relatively affordably too so um but yeah let's say you say you put in like some really high quality vodka of some kind like some like big heavy heavy duty somewhat clear vodka it's not entirely clear it's somewhat right clear. it's a little murky uh but it looks it's the best thing you've seen here it's in this big right. fancy looking bottle like a repurposed uh some kind of like a repurposed halogen bulb or something how much does it cost uh i don't know so i'll have to look okay. it up but we'll say enough I gotta check the the prices first. Sure, yeah, we can settle up later. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, but he'll buy it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Clover, why don't you go ahead and roll a manipulation test as you start kind of asking around to try to get somebody to do a thing for you? All right. I got a success. Okay, roll stress again, <laughs> as it is kind of a very busy, busy place. Yeah, this is not my scene, like, mm -hmm. at all, so... Uh, hey, hey, no. Uh, yes? You know, we, there's a certain art to asking around about things, right? Now you tell me? Well, yeah, um, sorry. But I could try and, you know, help you out here. Uh, you know... One key thing when you're going into a bar where nobody knows where you are, or I mean, knows who you are, is uh, you don't start right away. You just hang out, you know, and uh, you you eye the room, and you see who's looking at you, and, uh, seeing if they're noticing you, looking at them, and just kind of watching people, mainly it just out of the seems corner. Like of your such eye. a waste of time. I don't have time for that. Well, yeah, I mean, it kind of is at first but you know so is uh so is learning a new skill i mean you think uh uh everybody knows how to play the piano right away they're just born playing the piano oh, i don't know takes... i don't play the piano i have no patience to practice all right well um it seems to me that you haven't had much to drink with you know with the the amount of hurry that you're in we got 48 hours and we just spent one coming here we got 47 left we got so much time um mm. you know why don't you just that is true take her easy and uh you know let let it go a little bit and then when we start asking around I, i'm sorry i was trying to procure something but uh next time we ask around i can I can help you uh, talking to him. So you got one. So I will purchase I think, right? a Yeah, okay. I'll purchase a drink for him and thanks as well and okay. take a drink. All right. You're given a name. Uh, one name keeps popping okay. up as kind of a fixer type um, that okay. frequents the bar and can get thing, you know, kind of gets things done and is apparently a local. Uh, Addison T. Okay. Uh, and uh, like that name keeps popping up, uh, but no one actually gives you any sort of details on how to find him. And you ask around and ask around, and like you get confirmation like from a couple people who look a little sketchy here and there. But you spend most of the day in the afternoon, kind of asking around, asking around, asking around. Um, but no one, no one kind of gives you anything. Eventually, though, um, 
kind of return to the ship. It's it's going to be more comfortable staying on ship than it is going to be playing, you know, staying oh. on, uh, you know, on um, on station. Sure. Uh, but eventually, you get back to the ship, and when you do, you can see that there's there's Captain Frenchie, there's uh, there's Veronica, uh, in the kind of cargo area. Maybe uh, you see that little guy Chet kind of sitting on top of one of Biggie's equipment, like one of his pallet jacks or something, just sitting there playing his uh, playing his game. Uh, and you can see that Frenchie is talking uh, to a woman. Um, and Frenchie, it's a, it's a woman who introduces herself as, as, as Zona Winters. Um, and, uh, and that's that's the name I was given, right? Right. Yeah. And so it's just her, but you can tell that she's big and like she's got these she's like big and strong she's got like bigger thicker arms than you do uh, you can but she, at the same time she's like dressed nicely you can tell that she's got almost like not not like dress gear like like, like a dress uniform on but like definitely a high you know a high quality suit of some kind it's got the Wayland Utani logo uh, on it as well um, she's kind of running through you know everything that uh, she needs and she's very precise and very specific with uh, you know, this cargo bay here is ours for the, yeah. for the extent of our stay on your ship absolutely we will not come into it unless directly told by you I'll tell you what I think we're going to get along just fine fantastic I'm happy to hear it I listen I'm just here to fly a ship and make some money so I don't want any trouble I want to make your job as easy as can be so you can make my job as easy as can be that sounds great she extends a hand give her a shake yeah then she kind of does one of those like whistles and you can see that coming you know coming in through like the umbilical area you can see that there's now about a dozen dozen dudes are coming by bringing in this gear these big old crates pushing them on pallets that are just kind of floating and then they get on wheels and as they're passing by Big E and Clover, you notice something. Veronica and Fr- Veronica, you might actually recognize this because you had three successes. Frenchie, you're probably a little in the dark. But all the people coming on are dressed inside of the same outfits that that she's wearing. Like nice, nice, clean, sleek kind of black uniforms, co- small collars, little logo for Waylon Utani. Uh, but they have a ton of gear, and some of that gear is hidden away and stowed away in these like. These crates that uh, seem to be reinforced, other gear is kind of stacked on top of it. You can see they got a, a series of like these heavy-duty armors. And as they wheel by, Biggie and Clover, you have a little bit of a start. As you can see, the the armor that they're wheeling in has the same sort of faceless mask, the same kind of big old dark, reflective, uh, like or matted down like shoulder pads and chest piece as the figures that you encountered when you were left and abandoned on Tanaka 5 that walked up to you all intimidatingly and like kind of shined the light in your faces, checked your identity, and then blew the head off the local who was in the truck and not supposed to be there. It's the exact same gear. And I think we'll end there for tonight and uh, pick back up in a couple weeks. Oh dear. That's great. It's gonna be awesome. Great. Everything. There's great. so many things that are wrong about all of this. That I know. <laughs> yeah. I have to go investigate oh, this stuff. Guess. Oh, this is great. Okay. Oh, um, no. Yeah, I didn't want to get too far into a mission tonight just because Matt wasn't here, but I, yeah. I did want to kind of move some pieces around here and there, uh, and give you all a chance to do like personal character stuff. Uh, we'll hit the XP thing really fast. I don't know how much we'll get, but um, we'll go ahead and ask those questions. So keep track of your own stuff. Uh, so participate, yes. Uh, sacrifice something to further your personal agenda. Uh, Clover, you can take a you can take a, a point for that. You were bar that is not the type of place I would frequent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, risk something. Risk your life for your 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 buddy PC. 
I don't know. We're going to have to kind of revisit buddy PCs, I think, uh, a mm-hmm. little bit. Some people yeah. might want to change that. You're free to do so anytime you want. Um, yeah, half the group lost their rival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, challenge or stand up to your rival PC? Uh, make I that it's stuck great. a dirty ferret in his face because I have now decided who my rival is now. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, panic roll. Anybody do a panic roll? I think Clover did, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, overcome a dangerous event using violent or nonviolent means. Uh, Frenchie, take a point. All right. That Ooh. meeting was very dangerous. That could have gone really bad. Okay. <laughs> and it went. I was going to say the well. only. Th- yeah, the only thing I sacrificed was my dignity. Oh. So it's okay. <laughs> in your future, that's it. Just those two things. <laughs> you are totally locked in now. Uh, did you make a significant discovery or revelation? What we saw at the very end is uh, that significant. Uh, I would say um, discovering the stowaway, which was Marshall's leftovers, was pretty significant. Okay, yeah, I'll take <laughs> that. It was entertaining. <laughs> yeah. uh, extraordinary action. I don't think so. Earn any money? Um, we'll say. I think we did that last time, right? I think so. Okay, so yeah. we'll say no since we didn't. Since the money you technically got, you got from last session. Okay uh so let's do some final plugs then we'll get out of here so jeremy tell them where to find your podcast again oh the place you find fun podcast things p-l-e-w-d plube cast perfect uh adam uh well yeah i'd like to uh bring up the uh grim perilous patreon um where we cover a lot of uh, um, what we're doing for Radiator RPG that's coming out. Um, we've got episodes of uh, the playthroughs, and um, here soon, once we start getting some more resources together, we're going to start publishing um, a little bit of uh, written material for people to peruse over because it's been a while. So, um, yeah, the Groove and Perilous Patreon, which I'll get a link up here for. Yeah, I don't think I have the Patreon one. I think I have your, I have the Twitch channel on oh, the, uh, the Nightbot. It's appreciated. Yeah. It's been a, oh gosh. That's going to be in my head for the rest of the night now. Thanks, Jen. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Jen, uh, what would you like to, any, are you doing any streaming this week on the, on your channel? Oh yeah. We're going to be doing Borderlands 3 tomorrow. We're probably going to be doing No Man's Sky on Wednesday. Um, Satisfactory on Thursday. And who knows about the weekend? Awesome. So, all kinds of stuff. And Chuck, Defenders. Defenders of Cobalt. Check us out uh, Wednesday night for Rhyme with the Frost Maiden. Uh, we're doing the fifth ed adventure using Dark Trails. Uh, what do we got? Uh, well, that's Wednesday night. Friday night, we're running basic fantasy role playing game, some, you know, OSR BX based goodness will be kicking off um and that's the big things tomorrow night over on notorious dmg we got some ad and d some first edition uh yeah that's kind of it for the week awesome uh for melissa and i uh next monday we'll be over on free league publishing doing vason um i think we're trying to put together something on saturday we played this uh fun little game called a town called malice or place called malice town called malice something like that one of those two town town called malice which is a lot like fiasco so we might try and run that again saturday afternoon um then uh i think tomorrow night over on the free league publishing channel i think i'm playing twilight 2k with matt who isn't here um but not sure that's going on if he's going to still be sick or sick or not so we'll see uh but check it out um otherwise we'll be back in two weeks for alien and uh we'll get started on another mission in craziness this will be fun i'm excited Very excited. Wonderful. Really uh, so we're going to go ahead and put it on the end channel uh, or the, the, yeah, the end screen. And I'll go ahead and give a raid to someone. All right. So have a good night, everybody. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.